Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, I'm your host, Mrs. M. And if you haven't, make sure you click the link below. That way you can subscribe to my channel and not miss out on anything you need to scale your cleaning business to six figures and beyond. Pow! So are you still looking to do work with the government? I know a lot of you are looking to do work with the government. So in this video, I'm going to give you the entire from the beginning to the end, what the acquisition process looks like. Now, I always have said, if you looked at my videos, this is the juicy time. A lot of people don't realize how this could make or break them getting into it when it comes to making money right now. So I'm gonna give you as much as I can so that it doesn't overwhelm you, but I do want you to get in the game if you are looking to get started with government contracts, government cleaning contracts, if you're looking to do facility support, Hold tight. In this video, I'm going to tell you the entire process from the beginning to the end. And if you stay to the end, I have a bonus for you that I will give you at the end of the video. Okay, let's go. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers for what you need to do to scale to six figures and beyond. Pow! Utilizing government contracts. The first part is understanding their requirements. Now I've gone over the requirements to look at some of my other videos if you wanna know about SAM.gov and the real nitty gritty details with SAM. But the first thing you've gotta meet all the requirements. So make sure you've met all the requirements. That's the first thing I'm putting on my contracting officer hat. And as a contracting officer, I'm looking for someone that's met all the requirements. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to look and do some market research. I want to put out a solicitation for services in Texas, Florida, uh, California, three, four states. So I'm going to look and see one or two things, maybe one or two. The first thing is I've already worked with the company. I know their history. I know what they're about. I'm going to sole source, sole source to them. That's a great position to be in. But what do you need as a company to be able to win sole source? The number one vehicles that win source source sole sources are vehicles that are indefinite vehicles, like indefinite time, indefinite quantity. Those are the number one vehicles that win sole source. Number two, if you're 8A certified, that you can win a sole source without any other kind of step that's required, as opposed to woman-owned small business and veteran-owned business, you do have to go, you can be looked upon for winning a sole source, but there are still a couple of decisions that have to be made. But 8A, you can win a sole source just solely off the contracting officer because I want you to realize this, okay? Contracting officers love a simple process for awarding the contracts. Believe it. They don't want to have to go through a lot, but they want to get the best, absolute best choice. So you want to make sure that you understand what vehicles are going to be able to get you there. So like I said, a couple, I know I personally won an indefinite time, indefinite delivery. What does that mean? That means that I had a contract at, on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. I had to clean and provide services for doing the, the actual cleaning there, but there wasn't a definite time frame. Like I didn't know if it was like, we're going to use you every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, something like that. There was an indefinite quantity and indefinite time. The contract wasn't a specific time frame, and I didn't know how many people they were going to need. Now that what could be challenging, but it was well worth it. So indefinite time vehicles, indefinite in it's called IDV. Indefinite vehicles are great. The other place that are needing us so much, I can't emphasize it enough, is Homeland Security. They need our services like you wouldn't believe. So I really, really, really want you to reach out to the Homeland Security Osdabu. Reach out to them, get that introduction letter, introduce yourself, and start finding out what there is in your area. Really, 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 really need um, people to do the facilities, especially this time of the year. It's really hot between now, which is August, through September. And then October is when you start marketing. So there's always something to do. And if you set yourself up right in October, November, December, in that time frame, you'll be really, really primed for that April, May, June, July, August time frame, September. That's what you want to think about. 
Now, the other thing is I want to give you are the priorities. The priority normally, normally is 8A. And 8A, like I said, you can get sole source. That means that they can give you that contract, end story, sole source it out. The second thing is if you're a veteran, a service disordered, dis, service disabled veteran, then you can also, through the veteran affairs, you would come as a priority with the VA. If you are a vet and if you are a service disabled veteran, both of those together are going to really, 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 if you if you have that certification, you're you're gonna hit it out the park. So those are two that I want to talk about. Veterans, I'm a veteran. Hello, all the veterans. Hello. And also, if you are a 8A. Now, 8A, not going to go into a lot of detail now because it can be quite involved, but it is a great program to be involved in. So if you want to learn more, then look in my previous videos where I go into great detail about 8A or visit us on our Facebook where we have conversations about 8A and all the certs, okay? The other thing I wanted to talk about is the difference between an IFB, Invitation for Bid, and an RFQ, with quote, uh, it's a request for quote. IFB, Invitation to Bid, and RFQ, Request for Quote. Those two are going to look almost primarily at price. So pay attention. That's going to be your best because most of the people that come to me are individuals like yourselves that have never won a contract before. So if I'm a contracting officer and I have my contracting hat on, I'm looking at what do you need to do to make sure it happens? It happens every day, all day. The difference is there are people that give up and there's people that keep on going. So I'm giving you as much information as I can without overwhelming you on things you need to do. The first thing is meet the requirements. The next thing is your market research, like I talk about, looking to see um, if you are going to look at doing a quote. Or an, or an invitation for bid. The third thing is I am the contracting officer. I'm gonna write out that, that solicitation proposal where I am looking to uh, gather the data from various resources. The next thing is I'm gonna do the proposal evaluation. I'm gonna evaluate the proposal. Now, an RFP is a request for proposal. Those do sometimes require technical, so they are price related and non price related when they come to winning. So stay in the lane that's going to fit you. If you've never gone after a bid, if you've never, if you don't have a team, if this is your first one, you don't have a lot of past performance, stay in the IFB, invitation for bid and request for quote. That's going to be primarily price related. The quotes. I'm sorry, the RFP, the request for proposal, is going to have a lot more legs to it. So that's going to be the lane for individuals that one, two, three hundred, you know, thousand dollar contracts that may be with a subcontractor. But think about that because you want to make sure when you're looking at your bid, no bid decision, you don't waste any time. And there's this whole thing with bid, no bid. Should you go forward with the bid or not? So that's what I want you to focus on. Now, the other thing is, you've won when you've won a bid they will send you an award letter rather quickly so if you have not let's say you had to do the bid three days ago and you've not heard back reach out to that agency they will give you all the reasons on why you did not win okay so you will get an award letter if you've won so if a month has gone by and you've not gotten anything you probably haven't won and then the last thing is going to be the admin piece and the close out. They're going to close it out, meaning they've closed that bid out and you're moving on with winning that bid. So I tried to put the contracting officer hat on so you know the whole process of what they're looking at and then the hat as the, the company that's winning the bid. So kind of both. But like I said, Homeland Security, making sure that you are absolutely in place. Now, for those of you that stay to the end, let me make sure I covered everything. One last piece. If you are looking for pre-solicitations, this is the piece that I want to talk about. A lot of people go where the puck is. You've, you've seen, if you've seen anything with hockey, you know, you don't want to go where the puck is. You want to know where the puck is going to go after it's hit. So in other words, you don't want to chase where everyone else is. If everyone is on eight, you want to be on six. If people are coming to six, you want to be on seven. You always want to be one step ahead. So one of the things you can do are pre-solicitations. Pre-solicitations are in SAM.gov, absolutely free. All bids are, unless you're paying a platform for them, which there are advantages for that. But if you are using SAM.gov, 
They are absolutely no cost. Set your filter. Look for a pre-solicitation. Pre-solicitations are great because they are normally 15 days before the actual bid solicitation hits. It gives you a little bit of room. Reach out to that contracting officer. Let them know who you are. Send them that elevator pitch, that, you know, that introduction letter. Get busy being proactive and not reactive. Really makes a difference. Now, for those of you that are sitting on the sidelines, for those of you that do not believe this can work for you, for those of you that are already doing part of it and you've been waiting or you've gone in and you've done the SAMs and it's confusing and you don't know should you do this or that, and you're looking for a brand new opportunity to scale your business, this is it. It really is. I am so excited about all the opportunities we see coming down the pipeline and you can be one of those companies that are enjoying it as well. But there is work. It's not just an easy peasy, you know, just sit there and it happens. There's work involved. I always tell my clients and students that, but it's well worth it. So if you really want to learn more, you really want to get into it, my free workshop, I go into all of that and more from the beginning all the way through. So I'd love to see you there. I only take 25 people at a time because we do a lot of Q&A. There's energy, excitement. I've got one coming this, uh, this Wednesday at noon. If you've ever been there before, I change it so often because everything else changes. I update it and change it. So if you've been there, you really haven't been there because I change it. And if you've never been to the workshop, you really need to make sure that you're there. Click the link to register noon Eastern time this Wednesday. And until next time, be safe. Remember, you want to visit the Facebook group. We've got so many other things in there. The link is in the description for the Facebook group. And also for so many other resources, I've got a free cheat sheet for you to download for you to get all of this. And it kind of takes you from step by step and it gives it to you in like a little cheat sheet where you can just kind of put it all together. So for all of that and more, I'd love to see you at the workshop, download that cheat sheet, see in the Facebook. So there's so many things. And I say, if you want to know what the next best step is, look in the link. I give you all of that in the description. So remember, I want to see you there. Get busy with these government contracts. Let's make this happen. And until next time, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.